And we're on. Welcome back to the Lena Stronger podcast. This is Coach Buddha. Coach Teresa. I got to tell you that I've been fantasizing about today's episode for many years. Today, we're going to spill the beans. <laughs> we're, we're really, man, I've, I've really been wait, looking forward to it. <laughs> we're going to spill the beans on something that you must know about personal trainers in big box gyms, like Fitness First. We're going to name names. Ooh. All right. We're going to throw everyone under the bus who deserves to go there, but we're also going to be truthful. Yeah. We're, we're only going to speak the truth. The truth, because at the end of the day, this podcast is to help and serve others. And hopefully it might shine a little bit of light on the truth and the reality of starting as a personal trainer yeah. at a place like Fitness First. That's right, because right now there is a big problem where everyone is losing. Big time, okay? So let's just cut to the chase and let's cover what you need to know about personal trainers, in particular personal trainers who are charging 50 to $60 per hour while they're working in a big box gym like Fitness First. And the reason why I say I specify working in a place like Fitness First is because there's a few different models when it comes to employing personal trainers. There is the franchise model, which is what Fitness First employs. So you buy in to become a franchisee, and then you have to pay rent to Fitness First so that you can then run your business at Fitness First premises using their equipment, getting some leads from them, and, and all that. Another common model is an employment model. So now you don't pay rent, you don't pay a franchise fee, you don't pay rent to the gym, but instead you're, you're an employee. So the money that goes from the client goes to the gym and then they pay a wage to the personal trainer. So Fitness First has this prior, the franchisee model. So what do you need to know about these trainers who are charging 50 to 60 dollars per hour? When you begin your career as a personal trainer, you have to you know, spit out this big franchise fee and or I should even go back. When you begin as a personal trainer, you first need to get a certificate three and four in fitness, right? How long did it take for you to get those things? Look, I took my time with it, I yeah. must say, because I was working full time plus. So it took me 12 months. 12 months, okay. It took but me still, for two certificates, 12 months is not a very long time. No, not <laughs> at all. And what would you say, like, how prepared were you to work in the fitness industry and help people with their you know, with their training, with their lifestyle, and of course, personal trainers are not supposed to give nutrition advice, but with their nutrition, because like, let's, hey, let's face it, like, if you're not giving people help with their nutrition, no one's getting any results, it's just a joke. So, how prepared were you to help real people in the real world after that certificate three and four? At the time, I thought I was ready as. I thought I was the bee's knees. I was so good. Like, I lift heavy weights. Like, I know all this cool stuff that nobody else knows because of you. But I was not ready. Like, the more that you're in the job, you're like, oh, I know nothing. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And that's, I think, the yeah. worst part is that you go out from that certificate three and four feeling like, man, I am so good. I know absolutely everything. That's it. But after, you know, having worked at the gym for seven years, having seen this play out so many times, conducting over 10,000 hours of personal training sessions, myself personally, I can tell you that it does not prepare you at all. So you're fresh out in the industry. You've got a certificate three and four that doesn't really, you don't really know what you're doing. You don't really have any kind of a training model at all. And now you have to start paying rent to the gym. With Fitness First, that rent is $425 per week. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money if you are in the beginning of your journey and potentially you're charging $50 to $60 per hour. That means that like a little like 10 hours, like 10 sessions goes just into covering your rent. And this is where the problem lies. What does it tell you if someone's charging you 50 to $60 per hour? What does that tell you about that trainer? There's two things. Number one is that they are either, they're very fresh in the industry and 
they are just surviving. They are in this complete survival mode. They are hustling to get as many sessions as possible so that they can cover their rent. The problem with hustling and being in the survival mode is that you're stressed out. Absolutely. You're like you're stressed out of your mind. You, first of all, you're trying to cover that rent where, and if you miss a payment, you're slugged with a $15 fee. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to be late with those payments. On top of rent, let's say in somewhere like Melbourne or Sydney, where, where it's exuberant, you're paying probably $400 a week rent there. And yeah. then on top of living expenses. Exactly. You've got to live somewhere too, right? So yeah. if you're charging that small dollar amount yeah. for sessions, you are... You are in a lot of strife. Yeah, like you're really stressed out. And then, hey, let's not forget the tax man. Like a lot of personal mm. trainers, they'll, they'll put that 50 bucks cash in hand, put it straight in the pocket. But a lot of people who really want to kind of have a longevity in the industry, you know, especially like if you want to get a mortgage later down the track, it's a pretty good idea to start, you know, putting it through the books and being Absolutely. really legitimate about it. So now that means that you've got to pay like another, you know, 30%, 30% goes goes to the tax man. So holy shit, like now that 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Has now turned into 20 bucks. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's a. That's not even, like we're getting close to less than minimum wage now. Exactly, 100%, 100%. So you don't know what you're doing. You're working super hard, like crazy hours. You're going in the morning and then you've got a couple sessions. Then you're going in the midday and then you've got some evening clients because you, don't, haven't have, you haven't established like a solid client base where people mm. kind of, you don't have to work like three shifts, but you can kind of just do mm -hmm. them all in one go and have a, have a single shift. You're super stressed out. You're tired out of your mind. And hey, let's not forget that you're fresh out of doing a certificate three and four that prepares, that does not prepare you at all. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Exactly. So this is a big, big problem because now you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, and you don't have money to invest into continuing education, to upskilling yourself so that you can improve your training model, so that you can actually spend some time with some people in the fitness industry. There are a lot of great mentorships out there online and a lot of great books and a lot of great information these days that can really help you to build a training model that is really, it works, it delivers great results, and it's actually helpful to the clients, which is the, the number one thing. But now you don't have the time, the energy, or the money to set time aside to go and upskill yourself. So this is where like, you, you get into the problem with fitness industry, is that it has an incredibly high churn rate. Mm. On average, 80% of personal trainers who become personal trainers will not be a personal trainer after one year. That is a ridiculously high churn rate of mm. people who just can't make it. They, they just... It's pretty sad too because a lot of the people, well, I mean, okay, this is another thing we can go through, but there's a lot of people who go into the industry like really inspired and motivated to want to like really change lives and mm. to really motivate people and inspire them to live a healthier life or get stronger. Or maybe this like this personal trainer has a passion for lifting and they want to really pass that on to more people. And like myself, for example, like I and a lot of the trainers that we used to work with like left probably jobs that pay higher, like mm -hmm. much higher, you know, than a personal training job initially, career job initially. So, so to, to let go of that because the model or the whole process or the way that things are set up initially with these big box gyms is, it's pretty devastating. Yeah, wouldn't, yeah you say, pretty... wouldn't you say that you kind of went through oh, that yourself? Because you, you know, you know, you went from being totally. a, like being a teacher, having like a pretty secure job, definitely. Like, not yeah. you know making like ball or money, but still like making pretty good money. Yeah, like I think back then I was like seven years ago. Now I think I was making alongside like my the string teaching I did probably somewhere near eighty thousand a year. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I wasn't 
throwing out dollar bills, yeah. but every, the bills were paid, rent was paid, but you know, we won't go. You've probably already heard the story of why I left teaching, but, um, but yeah, like moving to a position where you have no job security, you're trying to pay rent, bills coming from all different angles, and then the building up your clientele is, is quite difficult. Like, of course, you're going to have moments where you second guess yourself and you're like, this is not for me. I mean, I'm just not cut, cut out for this. I want to quit. I want to go back to where I have more security, more stability and what I think I'm good at. So, yeah, obviously I had you and I had a lot of mentors and support at the gym we were working at and I was ambitious and determined and there was a lot of tears, <laughs> a lot of tears. <laughs> I, I could definitely attest to that. But at the same time, like I'm so glad that I pushed through that phase, not, not just because it meant that I could continue on the path that I'm currently on, but because I grew a lot, like from that through challenge. Struggle. Yeah, yeah, through struggle, like through making a big change and struggling mm. but then making it work yeah that's it you know so um back on track to yeah. where we were so that's how you kind of overcame the issue and i don't want to you know i've kind of we've laid out this problem because this problem causes everyone to lose the personal trainer loses the clients lose because they're getting a shit service that's not improving over time because the trainer can't improve it mm. and then also the establishment itself is also losing because now people are not having a great experience mm. and they're not getting great results. So it's going to re uh, increase their, like the amount of people who are quitting their membership and stuff. Mm. So we've kind of laid out this issue. How would we recommend to solve it? I think we should come up with some kind of a solution. And I, I think I can tell from personal experience how my experience was very different in that I went straight into an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. And it's the oldest model in the book, right? It's applied in so many different industries, has been done for hundreds of years. Mm. Like you do some kind of training mm. and then you go into an apprenticeship model mm -hmm. where you can make mistakes and you're like, you're not being punished so hard on them. You know, mm. like you can make, you can take some risks. There's a safety net there. hundred percent. I had this great mentor, Tony Calabro, full shout out, like that guy, he, I worked pretty hard, but that was like, he was giving me all the clients that I wanted mm -hmm. and my book was full. Yeah. But he wasn't Amazing. like squeezing the lemon, you know, he wasn't like squeezing it out of me, but he was also paying for my continuing education courses. Like he would pay for me to go to Sydney and take a course that cost like a couple of grand mm -hmm. just because he knew that when I come back, I'm going to be delivering a better service and then he can then like up the the charges that he's charging for people who are training with me. Totally. You, yeah, extremely fortunate position to be in. Yeah. You so, know, and then when it was time for you to, to kind of spread your wings. Yeah, spot ways. Yeah, as, that's it. See, as if, they see say, if my wings would carry me. You know, like you had everything that you needed to be able to survive from day one. Yeah. You know, um, but the re I think the biggest reason why you could survive from day one is because you were also given that supplementary education and skills, which for you, you also had from doing really well in sales. You had all those like the sales skills and not to say that like, you know, I've had this conversation before where sales needs to be seen as like this like gross thing, but it was more just that ability to inspire people and motivate people that you were going to be the best fit for them to help their massive life transformation essentially that's what it is yeah yeah so those skills you know i think as well for me were extremely important in leading to my long-term success as a trainer as well it's having that that holistic approach to a trainer i guess that is really needed to be delivered yeah and i think we should i should also put it out there that like all the individuals that i've come in contact and who i've worked with over the years within the kind of the fitness first structure everyone wants you to succeed I and mean, i've been really lucky we've been really lucky for having like great managers from like personal training managers to the club managers 
obviously like still great friends with most of those guys. Yeah. And we've just been really lucky from that perspective too. But it's just that the whole model mm. is kind of messed up as opposed to like a certain individuals. Like everyone really wants to succeed and wants to improve it. Mm. But at the same time, like there is this huge, huge, huge problem. So I guess the takeaway from this is that if you're, if you've got a personal trainer who is, you know, you are looking for a personal trainer, don't look for a bargain because mm. you like, you'll get what you paid for. Totally. Don't look for a bargain with personal training. It's the same thing as like, you've got a major dental operation or something, or you've got like, you've got something that you don't want to be like, it's your someone, Mercedes. Yeah, exactly. Like you just want this thing to get done right on the first go. You don't want to do it again. Personal training is one of those things because we're talking about your your, your health. Body. We're talking about your like everything in your body. Like what your trainer, the advice that they give you and the type of training that they give you will influence your musculoskeletal system, your hormonal system. system, your hormonal system, your nervous system. So and then you, like your long-term relationship with food and training as well, I, pff, which is extremely important. That's, I would say those two relationships outside of your, you know, your number one are the most important relationships that you will ever have in your life. Yeah. Like relationship with your food at 100%. and training. Yeah. You know, that's well said. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So you really don't want to be getting bad advice. So. Mm. If someone's offering 50 to 60 bucks, might not, be the, might, not, might not be the best thing for you to take on that offer. And then, well, like, can you do something like, hey, you gotta go listen to this podcast. And like, they'll, <laughs> go, go ahead, listen to this guy speak and they'll tell you what you're doing wrong if you're charging 50 to 60 dollars an hour. That's and right. then on the other hand, when someone slaps you that, you know, like we're talking about like probably like 100 to 120 Australian dollars per hour. If you see that when someone presents their prices to you for one hour, for one hour, that's going to be something that you want to consider seriously, especially mm -hmm. if they can then back that up with a track record of some testimonials. They should have some before after photos mm -hmm. and like you should really have some proof in the pudding that their service is actually working. In that instance, it's probably someone that you want to go with, but you really don't want to go with the cheapest option. No, no, sir. And like, I think it comes down to as well, like educating the public and educating people who are interested and ready to get a personal trainer. And that absolutely, we're not just looking for a bargain. And I think we need to also change our perception of, of yeah, what we think is a reasonable price because at the end of the day, you are investing in yourself. You're investing in your long-term health and your long-term success with your body and your relationship with training, as we've said. And, you know, for some people, long-term training, having a trainer for the rest of their life is a privilege. But, you know, we do know that for some people, maybe working with a trainer for 12 to even 16 weeks is actually life, transfer, life transformative. It should be. And it should be. If if it's the right trainer who has a plan for you, who's going to educate you as well, and are really trying to promote this longevity thing, then you may only need to work with a trainer and invest with them for three to four months, but you need to show up. You need to put in everything, put in the effort, ask questions, be there to, to take it all on board. And I... A great trainer gets really excited when they have a client who's actually interested in learning. They're interested in learning behaviors, habits, they're interested in learning all the different parts of nutrition, and they're really interested in understanding their body and training itself and all the technique and the form. So be that person. Take responsibility for yourself to show up and you will change your life. It, you will get the most out of it, I guarantee it but it's more about people wanting to show up. And I think that's where sometimes, not sometimes, but a lot of the time across, you know, the span of being a trainer, we get really frustrated as trainers because, you know, a lot of people think that just because they pay the dollar or pay the price, mm -hmm. it's just gonna happen magically, but it doesn't. You gotta put in the work. Ooh, 
Ooh, I got a bit spicy there. I think that's beautifully, that's beautifully, <laughs> beautifully said. And really, when it comes to the, if you put the invest investment into perspective, like let's say it's a hundred dollars a session, twice a week for twelve weeks, right? Two hundred dollars. That's going to be like twenty four hundred dollars, right? That's the price of the f new freaking iPhone. That's Seriously. right. Seriously, and people will go and people, are people will go and buy that new iPhone without like no questions 100%. asked at all. I need that in my life. But then every two years or eighteen months, they're spitting out a new phone. That's right. But then let's say that you you find this really good trainer wherever you are, like this person who can really make a change in your life, and you invest in the spending time with that person, getting the skills, the structure, the support, and the accountability from that person for a extended amount of time like four months that's going to be a life transforming experience and you should be able to look back like 10 20 30 years down the line look back at your time like man like i'm i, I i'm still doing some of the stuff mm. like some of the best things for me i get have gotten that surprisingly a lot actually people will send me messages like years after i've stopped training them and they say like man like look I just competed in the in in this like competition, and I have like thank you so much. Like I I feel strong. I've been doing this exercise that you taught me like years ago, and that's just like man, like that's that's amazing. It feels so good. It makes you want to keep doing what you're doing because yeah. you know you're making change, and that's why we started this. That's why we've gone down this. Because that's all we really want to do. <laughs> that's right. All right. I think that's a pretty good place to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, we'd love to continue the conversation on our socials, at Coach Putter, at Coach Teresa West. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and listening. We'll see you in the next one.